Good morning everybody. It is Sunday morning. What day is it? 31st? No, 30th I think. Or is it 31st? I don't know. Anyway, um, I forgot I've got this bloody camera that doesn't shield the wind so I'm going to try and shield it here. But I wanted to start off by showing you this spectacular view. Now this particular building here is one that I've featured on the channel. If it'll actually focus. That's Wentworth Castle. Um, that was built later than you'd actually think. There's also on the same piece of land is another castle called Stainsbury. I don't think you can see it from here. But it's a manufactured castle that they created to look years old. Oh look, you can see the pavilion there. Not the pavilion. What they call it. Let's see if we can zoom in on it. Where is it now? I can see it there. Oh there it is, look. See if we can zoom in. Oh, it's too far. Um, that's a beautiful little sun house. I can't think what you call it. Pagoda, maybe. Anyway, everyone, we're on our way to Oldham. We're going to go to Cheddarton Cemetery. We're going to go and find the grave of Charles Alexandra Walton, who is the father of William Walton, famous Oldham composer. Um, his mother and father are buried in this grave. And... Then we're going to go and look at a church that I've looked at before, featured it on the channel, told its history. But we're going to go and have a look at it because it's another building that's been earmarked for demolition in Oldham. Um, they're on a bit of a roll at the moment, everybody. They're managing to knock down quite a lot of history uh, these last few months. But yeah, anyway, my eyes are watering in this bloody wind. So let's get to Oldham. Right, everybody, I'm in Asda Cheddarton, that's Stockfield Mill. And uh, this is what it's looking like. Now it is. Now, we're going today, do you see the top of that church over there? Let's just do a zoom. That's the church top there that they're knocking down. St John's in Werneth. So we're gonna go there. We've looked at it before, but we'll go back. We're gonna get to Cheddarton Cemetery now. My favorite place. Oh, look which is just over here. So we'll get there now and go and find this grave. <sighs> I love, um, I love blossom trees. I wonder if these are the ones that get cherries. Oh, look at it falling. Can you see it? So lovely. Now we're here to look at one grave, but you know what I'm like? Probably get sidetracked. Um, Mr. Walton and his wife are buried actually just near my grandma, well, my grandma and granddad, yeah? Um, it's this area that we're approaching here, this final bit. The only strange thing is, well, there's nothing strange about it, but there's no, um, there's no stones. I can't imagine someone like William Walton wouldn't afford his own father and mother a stone. But we'll just have to wait and see everybody. Um, look at this. <laughs> look at them blackbirds and crows. Look at them all, look at them all. They do make me laugh, you know. Let's have a look. Look up. Let's put Windy down. <laughs> They're always in here. Look up. <laughs> God, why do they make me laugh so much? You know what they do? They stamp the feet till they get the worms to come to the top and then nab them. Right, let's get parked up. Turn it in cemetery. Oh, that one's got something in its gob. Don't be coming over my head bobbing on me. They bob on you, don't they? Anyway, I was going to show you the seagulls that perch on top of the graves, but literally every single one has took off. Apart from those crows down there, let's zoom in on them. Can you see them? I love this tree, this tree. Look at this tree, everybody. Can you see the blossoms falling? Anyhow, right, so, see, I think Mr. Walton's buried here. In this part. But the older graves look like they're over there. So we're gonna start over here because we'll probably see some graves that we wanna look at as well. 
and I really probably should go and put a coat on. Let me put a coat on. The birds are still circling everyone. Anyhow, so we're looking for the grave of Charles Alexandra Walton and his wife, whose name, for whatever reason, is just completely gone out of my head. But I do think it's in this area. I mean, he died in the mid 1920s. I think it were 1925 or 26 that William died. His wife, not William, Charles, but his wife died a few years later. I always had it in my mind that she died first, but there you go. So, we're looking for a grave of a suitable age. Now let's have a walk down here and see what we can see as well. Oh yeah, what's this? Thomas Oldham, 66 years old, died in 1955. Also his wife, Sarah Hannah. She died in 1966. I'm going to go over here. I've got a feeling it's going to be over here. It's a beautiful stone over there, everybody. I don't know if you can, if that's jumped out at you. This one here with the urn on top. Let's go and have a look. Let's have a look here. Here we go. In loving memory of Nellie, the beloved wife of Herbert Whitehead of Edge Lane, Oldham, who entered into rest 21st of November 1930. She was only 30, 46 years old. Herbert lived till 1952, he was 70. This is Ada Lees of Foundry Street. Died February the 25th, 1925, aged 52 years, and also Thomas, the beloved husband of Lucy Rayner. He died 1944. I wonder if Thomas was Ada's son. Possibly. Right, everybody, after much deliberation, I've decided that this is the area where he's buried, or they're buried. Um, and as usual, with all my bloody videos, um, I've got sidetracked. So, um, we're going to start from this corner, and I've decided we're going to have a look at a few graves. We're going to see if we can find it. We'll look at every single stone. I might not film every single stone. Uh, or I might not edit in every single stone, but we're going to have a good look and we'll see if we can find him, which is really what I'd love to do. So let's start with Robert, the beloved husband of Bertha Fish. What a name. That's fabulous, isn't it? He died July 12, 1919. He was 49 years old. Uh, and Bertha Whitaker. Now, she could have reverted back to her previous name because they did that, you know, the maiden names. Or she could have remarried, but then she would have been with her other husband. But she didn't die till 1951, so I reckon she's got remarried and chosen to be buried with Robert. We'll find out, won't we, everybody? We'll find out. This is the grave of Benjamin Wrigley. He died November 9th, 1922, at 67 years old. I wonder what Benjamin, Benjamin did. So Anne's in there and also Alice, the beloved wife of John Wrigley. That must have been his brother, maybe, or husband, uh, son, public son. And Mary Jane, daughter of the above, Benjamin and Sarah. Elizabeth, wife of Ernest Clay Carter. She died 8th of June. Oh, she was 42, everyone. In 1916. Also, Ernest Clare, he was 58, he died in 1933. This is a beautiful grave, this one. Look at the writing on that one, everybody. Wow. Charles Massey, who died December 26, 1916, he was 56. Also, Margaret, his beloved wife, she died in 1931. James, the son, he died in 1935, he was 44. God, they all died. Well, apart from Margaret, they all died relatively young, didn't they? And this here is the grave of Edward Jandrell of Park Road. Died 5th of June, 1919. He was 64 and also Eliza. 
Can you hear how beautiful it is in here, everybody? I love it. This is why I love graveyards. So interesting. This grave over here is just on its own. We're going to come back to this corner, but I want to know whose grave this is. There's a lot of people buried in this area, everyone, who haven't got grave markers. So who knows who's under this floor? You know what I should do, actually? I should do a grave. I should do a video where I feature the people who have not got marked graves, see if I can find anything out about them and who they were. But this is in loving memory of Thomas Henry, beloved husband of Ellen B. Strachan, who died August 16, 1915. Also, Ellen Strachan. Ellen died so in 1941. Was... Thomas, the son, he was killed in action at the Dan Dandellas. Dan. Da Danellis, June 4th, 1915, 22 he was. Jesus Christ. William Victor, their son, William Victor Strachan, their beloved son, he was killed in the Somme. So he, but he fought at 19 years old in the Battle of the Somme. Look, everybody. They nobly answered duty call gave the lives for one and all. That's a beautiful grave. That poor fella, 19. Must have been terrifying being in that battle with the Sam. It really must. Anyway, let's have a look round here. <laughs> have you heard them? So funny, them seagulls, honestly. Oh, in memory of, in loving memory of Private George Lewis Hammond, who died at Glasgow Central Hospital, March 6, 1919. 1919, I didn't say that properly then, did I? Age 35. And his wife, Ethel, who never remarried, looking at that, she died 7th of Feb, 1974. She was 90. We'll find out what happened to Private Lewis and why he was in Glasgow General Hospital. I said central before dinner, I? I meant general. You know what this I like? is the one that took my attention here, everybody. Caesar Holden. Died November 21st, 1973. He was 93 years old. Also Mary, wife of Caesar. We'll be able to find out some information on Caesar and Mary. I don't know to what extent yet, but we'll definitely be able to find something. I don't know where he's buried. I can tell you it's here somewhere, but it's an unmarked grave because they, they just don't have a stone. I'm going to say it's going to be in the region of here. Look at that plane. Should we try and zoom in? Um, look at them lot there, look at them. <laughs> I love them. So funny. Uh, back, to, back to business. So, it may be that I've missed it, I don't know, but it doesn't have a grave marker unless it's one of these. I just find it really strange. Someone like William Walton with the money that he had, why he wouldn't give his mother and father a stone. I seem to have it in my head that there was a little... I think when he was a child, his father had to make a decision as to who got what. He got uh, an education at um, the posh school in Coppice and his brother didn't. He also went off to Oxford. His brother didn't. His brother stayed in Oldham. He had everything given to him, really. Someone said that his... I'm sure they said his father was a an alcoholic. I don't want to tar the fellow with a brush that, you know, doesn't suit, but I've got that in my head. I'll take it back if I'm wrong, but I've got it in my head. So this is the grave of James Wright. And this is of the Greenwood family. I wonder how long them flowers have been there, everybody. I 
think we're going to go to we're going to go up to Werneth. I want to go and show you this church where he used to be the choir master. The information that I've seen, he was a teacher of singing or a singing teacher. They used to live at number 93, I think it was, Werneth Hall Road. The house used to have a blue plaque on it, but I'm pretty sure it's been removed. I don't know if that was by the current owners, maybe they were fed up of people coming looking outside the house. I don't know, was it 93? I'm pretty sure it was 93. I'll put a correction in if I'm wrong. Look at this everybody, isn't it beautiful? This is the Islamic section of graves. I mean, I'm not going to feature the graves because they are fairly recent. Um, look at the care that people put into keeping these graves spectacular. They really are cared for well, which is the same everywhere, you know, like wherever I go, whether it be in Bradford, whether it be in Oldham or wherever, the graves are always well tended. People visit on a regular occasion and they're just absolutely beautiful. Look at that. Stunning. Let's have a walk to the top. There's people here praying, tending to the graves. Have you heard that bird? <laughs> There's an area down here, everyone. Looks like the soil down here and other bits. I think that leads up to the back area of the cemetery, which is all overgrown with trees. Right, let's make our way back down to the car. Yeah, so as I said, um, I'd give you an overview of the grave, this part of the graveyard. Excuse me. So you've had an overview this part of the graveyard but honestly most of the graves are really really modern so I don't like to feature modern graves as you know um, but I did want to I did want to show you how nicely tended it is because it really is and uh, there's always people here always people but we're now done I think I'm going to pass by my favourite section of the of the graveyard, which is the big monuments. See what's going on down there. But we're going to go up to Werneth and then I'm going to go to our servers. Now, I am going to carry on filming because I'm meeting Alu this afternoon. We're going to go for dinner. I've not eaten yet today. But we're going to go for dinner at this new place in Oldham. And see what's what. So, I'll see you at the church. everyone you see that prospect house over there it's been their donkeys i reckon it were probably built in 60s or something like that maybe 70s but it's called prospect house and i remember it as a kid obviously i used to knock around around here this used to be the youth club in this site but um it's called prospect house because there was an old house there at one point called <laughs> prospect house interesting these weeping willows have been here for donkeys years right let's get up here so this church has been earmarked for demolition, St John's of Werneth. So this is actually where William Walton's father, Charles, used to teach choir. He was played the organ and he used to direct the choir in song. Um, I can't remember what she was called, a famous bloody woman, older mattress. I had a name last night in my head and now I can't remember it. Oh, Dora, Dora Bryan. Dora Bryan, she was married in this church. 
and it is one of the oldest churches in Oldham I mean just look at the brickwork but they've decided that it's time to pull it I think I did a video a while ago actually explaining that they were going to demolish it but it absolutely 100% has been confirmed and signed off now by Oldham councillor but it's a shame because what I mean by the shame is there's a lot of um, beautiful architecture in this church like these what's going to happen to all of these and they're all over it we're going to have a walk round if we can get round we've done it before but yeah here used to be the Yuffie demolished a long time ago I don't think we're going to be able to get round the back everyone and even if we did we're not going to be able to see anything we'll go around this side over here but yeah they've gone through a spate of putting up these houses which are fairly ugh. <laughs> sorry they're just not nice they're just horrible <laughs> and I apologize if you live in them everybody but you know there is no frigging character is they're not like what you get on copy so yeah these houses have been here for some time on St John Street obviously named after the church I don't think they're earmarked for knocking down this church has been dead and standing for a long time I featured it in the last video no parking demolition in pro oh my god <gasps> demolition in progress everyone oh this is the first time I've seen inside oh Everybody look at that window. Ah, oh, disgusting. That's shocking. I don't know what they've bothered getting the fans up, but they're putting the fans on fire unless they're just blowing in the wind. Do you see them? There can't be any electric, they must just be blowing in the wind. But this is what upsets me, everybody. All of this rubble here. You know, the beautiful stonework on the outside. The heads, you know, that were carved in. I mean, this is where the door used to be. So glad we walked around to have a look here. But this is where the door used to be. And look at them there. What's going to happen to them? What is going to happen to them? Oh, look. Let me get them all because no doubt they'll just be consigned to rubble. Let's have a look at this one. Look at her face, everybody. Trying to do it while I'm zooming in, probably not a good idea because I can't see properly. Yep, let's have a look at these. Nothing there. Nothing there. Look at it, everyone. I'm sorry that you're having to see it through this fence, but there's just no way around it. I'm not tall enough to put my camera above. Just trying to see if there's any more. Look at that there, the, where the altar would have been. Look at it, everybody. You know, it's making videos like this that makes me not want to come back to Oldham and do any more videos, if I'm completely honest with you. It's just really depressing. Let's have a look at this here. And then of course, to love that down. This will be down over the next week, I would imagine. It 
So there you go, everybody. <sighs> so depressing. See in the distance there, the um, chimney. They've been trying to demolish that for some time now. I think at one point they said it needed to come down brick by brick, but I think they've actually got a means now to um, blow it without damaging any, any houses. So we'll see. Let's have a look at the view from over here. Look at this old wall as well. <sighs> Such a shame, everybody. I think I've just decided on the name of the video. <laughs> the demolition of St. John. What's this? What is this? This must have been like an old, maybe it held like a, a gas lamp to welcome people to prayer, I don't know. Right, there's nothing to stay here for now, is there? We've seen what we've seen. I'm going to get some photographs. And uh, someone's left the flip flop there, look. You see, this is the thing, right? You people will say, well, you know, there's no use for the building anymore. No one goes to church. No, people don't. So, really, no one's got a right to moan when they knock these buildings down. But it's bigger than that, everybody. It's not. It's not. No one prays here. These buildings, this was built in the mid 1800s, this building. It might have even been earlier than that. And it's with the destruction of every single building and the replacement of these types of disgusting things here. Sorry, but they are, in my opinion. I'm just going to say how I feel. Um, that ultimately just ruins our towns and they just look the same. We're gonna, the old one's going to look like Milton Keynes anytime soon. But I've just seen a beautiful, oh, let's see what I mean. This is my problem. Look at this here. Look at them pillars. What's going to happen to them? I hope that someone comes and takes them. I mean, look at that there. Some fellas having a look. So, I'm just trying to see if there's anything else to show you, everyone. I really don't think. Oh, right, let's get to uh, Shulva. I'm going to nip up to Shulva now, go and see my cousin, and the next time you see me, unless I see so. Oh no, we're going to go and have a look at a blue plaque. Let's brighten the mood a bit. Right, everybody, I'm just off Rippenden Road. Uh, this is County Hill Road. So, County Hill School used to be at the top of there, it not, isn't anymore. I think it's houses now. There's an house over there that I was going to buy before I moved to Barnsley. It's beautiful. Um, but anyway, this is what I wanted to look at. These blue plaques here. Look at this. Celebrating the birth, birth of Rugby League. The RFL, 120 years. Near this site on the 21st of September, 1895, Oldham played their first home game under the rules of the Rugby League then known as the Northern Union. Oldham 3, Tildesley 11. It's not Tal Desley, it's Tildesley. <laughs> and oh, we've got a few memorials here. Watersheddings rugby ground on the site of the housing development to the east of this park was a famous watersheddings rugby ground which served, sorry, just checking if I were filming then, as the Oldham Club from its opening on the 28th of September, 1889, until the first team match on, last first team match, excuse me, on the 19th of January, 1997, Watersheddings Rugby Ground, and there's something here as well. This park opened on the 28th of April, 1988, by Councillor Arnold Tweeddale, it was named after Stanley Hardman, a local resident who acted as unofficial park keeper for many years. Aww. 
Stanley Park. Oh God, that's a right hungry. You know that shop down there, there, that, that, there. It's a Greek, Greek chippy. <laughs> and it's bleeding gorgeous and you can get gyros from there and everything, it's really nice. Anyway, everyone, I just wanted to let you know there is gonna be um, a Rippenden Road video coming up soon. I'm still working on it. There's a few places that I'm still looking into. And obviously I wanna bring you a full history, not just a part one. So keep posted for that. But anyway, I'm gonna get up to our Sarah's and uh, I'll see you now when we get to that place, will you? Right, everybody. We're down in uh, Hollywood now. We've got our lovely Lou and Connor here. We're at, uh, I can't remember what it was called, this pub. Oh. No, what was it called? Get, um, and stuff. There she is. Hi. <laughs> Connor. Hank Connor. <laughs> it's not Tuesday tea, it's Sunday tea. <laughs> so, yeah, this Tim Hortons. It's supposed to be really nice. There's a drive through. But we're going to get in because it's absolutely pouring already. So let's see what we get. Oh, Everyone, we're in really that um, Tim Hortons. I'm not that impressed, to be perfectly honest. It sounds posh, though, doesn't it? That is fries. This is the cheeseburger. It's all right. That, we, our Sarah said it's like a fur grain burger, and it is. It looks nice underneath. It's not bad. I'm not, I'm not complaining. The lemonade's flat. And um, your food. And that's Ruby's nice food. Nice How is it, Doobie? Is it nice? Oh, she's doing the thumbs up now. <laughs> oh, she's doing it. Is that a thumbs up or a thumbs down, Ruby? Quick, do it. Oh! Yay. <laughs> Talk to it. Hi, camera. What are you saying to it, camera? Ah. Mm. <laughs> 